visible reminder of a violent week in Guatemala. These police cars were set alight two days after private security guards shot at men protesting a recently approved silver mine. The day before, two people were killed and 23 police officers were taken hostage. In response, the government declared a state of emergency banning public gatherings. Thousands of soldiers and police were ordered onto the streets to check for weapons and search for residents accused of inciting violence. People here have been breaking the law and carrying out criminal acts of the highest level, such as murders. This is why we've introduced these measures. It's not about protecting the mining activities. But some residents say the violence is being used as an excuse to crack down on people legally and peacefully protesting the mine since 2011. Community leader Oscar Morales says his house was raided shortly after the state of emergency was declared. He's now in hiding. I'm afraid of what could happen to both myself and my family. There's no guarantee for my safety or for the safety of any of the people here. A state of emergency is against the rights of this community. Residents say the Canadian-owned mine threatens their water sources and that their community consultations have been ignored. But a mine spokesman says they've complied with Guatemalan law. Since 2010, we've had an open and constant dialogue with the communities to inform them about the mining process and our operation. We've always expressed our interest to keep the dialogue open with the communities using the proper channels and not by threats or pressures. The government says the state of emergency will last for 30 days. But without addressing the root cause of the conflict, the problems surrounding mining in these communities will not go away so quickly. David Mercer, Al Jazeera, San Rafael Las Flores, Guatemala.